be cool if no, it wouldn't be cool. No, no it wouldn't. <laughs> no. Hey, Jessica. Hi. You're back. I'm back. <laughs> and today we're going to continue this series. Everybody seems to like it so much about uncomfortable questions about their dogs. And and I got to warn you. Yeah. I know you're not prepared for this, <laughs> but. That's because I don't tell you questions. Um, we've got some questions today that are seriously uncomfortable. I mean, we've got some seriously oh, uncomfortable questions. More are you ready than, for them? More uncomfortable than the others? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are you ready for these? Oh, boy. All right, hit me. Hit me, hit me. All right, okay. So, coming in at number one, not necessarily in any chronological order, I have a question here, and I swear to you, I have seen this my whole life. If you're a pet owner, you've seen this. So this question that I'm going to ask you is something we all wonder about. We're just not quite sure about. Uh, but do you have anything you want to say right now? Uh, I actually do have a story that I wanted to tell you about my dog and how when I first adopted her, she really didn't like me much but i will what? save that i know right i will save that till the end i will go ahead and answer your questions first. okay so we're, we're stick around guys because at the end she's going to talk about her dog didn't like her is that possible and <laughs> what changed so she's going to give you that story at the end all right so you ready for the first question i'm going to hit you with it all right let's go okay here's the question why do dogs smell each other's butts oh well, that's not that difficult. That's not that uncomfortable. Um, dogs, <laughs> I actually, um, many years ago, was told a story about this, and it's, it's really silly, so bear with me, but apparently a very, 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 very long time ago, a bunch of dogs had a meeting in a cave. So before entering the cave for their meeting, they hung their tails up just outside the entrance of the cave because they smelled bad apparently and so they all took their tails up and hung them up at the entrance outside of the cave and there was like a fire or something they all ran out during the meeting and they just grabbed a tail and the the story goes that they didn't grab their own tails they just grabbed a tail on the way out so they have forever been smelling each other's tails trying to find their own <laughs> but that's not really the case that's just a funny story somebody has told <laughs> to pass down from generation to generation. Um, the truth is that when a dog smells another dog's butt, they get so much information from that dog. They're not smelling their butt because they think it smells good, though it might. I mean, there are some pheromones going on in this, but they're they're finding out everything about that dog. Um, that age, the breed, the sex. That they know if it's a male or a female. They know if that dog is healthy, if, if it has some uh, health problems going on, they can tell so many different things by smelling each other's butts. That's how they're greeting each other and getting to know each other. So even though it sounds like an uncomfortable question, the answer isn't all that uncomfortable. So they're kind of like investigating. They're doing they're a investigating. Bit of, yeah, exactly. doing a little bit of research work. That yep. would be cool if, no, it wouldn't be cool. No, it wouldn't. Yeah, no, 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 <laughs> no. Okay. All right. Question number two, uncomfortable question is... All right. Are you ready? Yeah, the first one wasn't that bad. Oh, this is this is great. You're okay. going to like this. You're going to like this. I've seen dogs do this. I actually had a female dog that did this, which is really weird because you wouldn't expect it. But why does my dog hump other people's legs when they come to my house? Hmm. It's embarrassing. It is embarrassing. And there are a number of different reasons for it. More often than not, it is because your dog has excessive energy or anxiety and they just have no other outlet for it. They have not been properly taught how to ex express themselves, how to uh, overcome their anxiety or how to uh, um, or, or have been provided a positive outlet for their energy. So more often than not, when it's a sh like somebody coming into the home, it's, it's probably anxiety. So your dog has not been properly taught how to cope with and social, it hasn't, hasn't properly been socialized. So somebody's coming into the house and their, their anxiety level is going crazy and it's just an, it's a physical outlet 
for an emotion that your dog is feeling. Uh, but oftentimes, if it's not a stranger, if they're doing it to you or another dog in your house or um, other dogs at the park, it's more, more likely that your dog has so much pent up energy and they haven't been taught uh, how to properly use that energy in a, in a positive way. So they're doing the best they can with what they have available to them. So really they just, they need to be redirected to an activity to release that anxiety or release that energy in a more positive way. Yeah, you know, I gotta tell you, I, I had a chihuahua and what she used to do when people would come over, they'd come over, they'd sit on the couch, she would run and get one of her stuffed toys put it in front of them and start humping the stuffed toy. Is that pretty much the same thing going on? Yeah, she had a lot of energy, a pent up energy. She needed, she needed, she needed more play whether that was physical or mental, she needed mental enrichment, she needed um, physical enrichment, some sort of play, some, some way to get out her energy. And um, she, wasn't, she wasn't getting that and she wasn't taught to direct her energy into positive outlets so that she, that's all she had that's all she knew so that's what so she did how, all right so we we hear what you're saying about this this energy thing mm -hmm. what could you do to prevent your dog from doing this you can't just go hey i know you're enjoying my dog there mr plumber <laughs> because uh he's got a lot of uh, energy what we want to do is stop them. So, I mean, let's let's help people out and tell them what they can do to get rid of their dog doing that. Yeah, so the, the very best time to stop this is when it first starts. So when you first notice that your dog is, is starting this behavior, that is the ideal time. That doesn't mean that if they've been doing it for years, you can't change it. It's just gonna take more time and practice on your part to um, adjust that behavior because it is a learned behavior uh, in your dog after they have done it over and over and over again and uh, have received probably a lot of positive <laughs> input, especially if people are laughing and letting them continue to do it. Um, but we want to redirect. So you can redirect to, to, to appropriate toys. Um, you can uh, uh, lure them away with a treat and then do a training session. But more, more likely than anything else, you're going to want to redirect them to a play session because they have all of that excess energy that they need to get out. So that's going to be probably the best way. And, it, and every dog is different, so you'll have to try different things with your dog, but definitely redirecting them to something more positive. Okay, that's very helpful. I'm sure people will love that. Um, this next one, I don't know, maybe it's silly, maybe it's not. Um, the question is, if I neuter my male dog, does that make him a female? That's a very strange question, and the answer is no. <laughs> um, there are different types of... so. There are different types of procedures, but a standard neuter, that, that what we consider a standard neuter, is very much what we see as like a vasectomy in a human male. Um, so all of their parts are intact. We've just kind of, they just kind of clipped the part that leads the, the semen out. <laughs> um, so, and that does cause changes in hormones and things like that, which is why you see some shrinkage and, and, and various things. But no, they are definitely still very much male. They are, they were born that way and they will always be that way. So it's not a sex change not, operation? It is absolutely not a sex oh. change operation. <laughs> okay, if you say so. Now, the next one is beyond gross to us as humans. Okay. Um, and I gotta tell you, I had a dog that did this too and I was so grossed out and I bet if you're watching this video now and you've seen it, it will gross you out. But here's the question. Are you ready? Ready. Why does my dog eat poop? Oh mm. my God. Yeah. You know what? I have had a number of people over the years ask me this question and in fact I have a really great file on this. I'll. It, it, I'll condense it for the video, but I have a really great file on this in my group, so you should definitely, if you're having this issue or if you're just curious, definitely join the group. There will be a link in the description below so you can join um, and access that file for free. Uh, but just to con condense it down a little bit, there are a number of different reasons why your dog could choose to eat poop, whether it's their own or another dog's or cat's or, rat or whatever it is. Um, more 
often than not, what I have noticed is that there's some nutritional reason for it. So we want to take a very close look at what your dog is eating. And I know I talked about this quite a bit in the first uncomfortable questions video. So we, we will definitely link that video in the description below. Um, but we definitely want to take a very close look at what our dog is eating because it could very well be telling you that they're their food is nutritionally lacking in some way. They're seeking something out. Maybe um, if there, there are so many different reasons and so like whys, which is why I, I say definitely join the group so you can read the file in the group because I really want to condense it for this video. But feeding a fresh food balance diet for your dog. Like I feed my dog a raw diet. It is a commercially available raw diet. And currently what she is eating is Answers Pet Food, which in my opinion is the best pet food on the market today. Um, I would definitely recommend you taking a look at what your dog is eating because more often than not, that is going to be the culprit. Uh, there's something nutritionally uh, unbalanced with what's going on with what your dog is eating and what's going on in their bodies and every dog is different and catching it early again is going to be key because just like anything else this is a learned behavior so if your dog does it for some time and even if you fix the nutritional uh, nutritionally what you're feeding your dog um, they it, it's something that they have learned to do over a period of time so they may continue to do it like it's just a habit that they have built up so i would definitely recommend you doing this sooner rather than later um, and again there are other things you can do if it has become a habit for your dog which again check the file in the group but <laughs> um bottom line let's look at what your dog's eating all right cool that should help people out yes. tremendously all right now you kind of teased us in the beginning and oh, you yeah. said you had a story about your dog not liking you which I find that hard to believe because I know your relationship with your dog now and I can actually see your dog off to the side of you <laughs> underneath the desk there let's see if we can get that see there can you call Kim for a second hey Kimbo you want to come get in the video Kim? there she is there's celebrity dog right there okay so Kim now follows you all around the house everywhere you go the bathroom the bedroom the kitchen out in the garage tell us how she reacted when you first got her, how she reacts now, and what was the change? So the reality was, and of course every dog is different, but the reality for Kim when we adopted her was that the primary caregivers in her life, at least the ones that we knew about, were male. So when we brought her home and started integrating her into our family, she was uh, much more... Um, attuned to my husband she had she had a male caregiver before us and probably even before that we were as far as I know at least her third home uh, so she was much more attuned to males as as caregivers additionally we had a chihuahua and <laughs> Uh, in my mind, so we had, a, we had a Pomeranian who had passed away and was very much a motherly figure to our Chihuahua and I was looking for that for her again. And when we adopted Kim, she wanted little to nothing to do with our Chihuahua um, and, and our Ch Gracie was her name, our Chihuahua. And Gracie was very much attached to me so she kind of um, wasn't, wasn't thrilled always about being in very close contact with me all the time because one she preferred my husband because that's what she was used to and she really didn't love being around Gracie too much at least initially but she um, Gracie definitely grew on her over time and so did I because I became her primary I mean my husband does a lot with her and plays with her and grooms her and feeds her and does all of that all of that but um, just the differences in male and female caregivers I think dogs and, and I've done other videos on my channel about this as well why why dogs tend to prefer females or, or women um, so I think just over time she has um, attached to me a little bit more and and yeah, we just had to build our bond. So if you if you adopt a dog and it seems like they are 
not really attached to you at first, definitely give it some time. Okay, I really appreciate you taking time out of your day. I know you're a very busy woman. You have a lot of stuff going on. Um, why don't you tell us where they can get more information? Do you have books? Do you have a group? Do you have websites? I mean, where can somebody get some more information if they're interested? Absolutely, and all of these links will be in the description below. I do have a book, The Seven Miracle Steps. I highly recommend this book for every pet parent. This is what I teach all of my in-home clients. It's the foundation work. We start on this before we start anything else, so I definitely recommend this book. You can get a digital copy for next to nothing. Uh, again, the link is in the description. You can also join the group. I have thousands of pet parents in my group, and it is, it's, it's a really wonderful place to be. Uh, really great resource because everything in it is absolutely free to you so definitely check that out and join and I also have an online course which I am um, very proud of I have hundred uh, over a hundred videos in the course that helps you with so many different things that your dog you and your dog could be going through from um, aggression to separation anxiety and uh, everything in between so I definitely recommend checking that out as well especially if you're having specific issues with your dog um, and there's also going to be, be a link in the description for the beginner dog training series which is a playlist here on YouTube so if you just got a dog or a puppy I definitely recommend starting from the beginning and going through that as well it is another free resource for you and if you have any other questions at all please comment below and let me know because what will happen then is I will answer you so you'll get an answer as well as you'll be able to help other pet parents maybe a pet parent who has the same issue as you but is a little bit too embarrassed to post it on a public forum like YouTube, you will be able to help other people that are having the same issue as you. So definitely post that in the comments below. I will be able to answer you. Additionally, more comments on a video triggers the YouTube algorithm to show this video to more people so we can help more and more dogs and pet parents out there, which is the goal of all of this. If you haven't already, please give this video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. When you do, a bell will appear. Click the bell, select all notifications. That way YouTube can notify you every time I post a new video. And you definitely don't wanna miss out on any of the videos on my channel because they are going to help you answer your questions like this video and build a solid bond with your dog. So thank you so much for being here and watching this video with me, seriously comment below if you have any questions at all. I would love to be able to help you and your dog out. And thanks so much for being here with me. I'll see you in our next video.